Okay, uh, so at the beginning of this course we spent a lot of time focusing on the governing equation systems that we talk about a lot in the world of aerodynamics, the Euler equation systems and the Navier-Stokes equation sy systems. Um, and we s invested quite a bit of time looking at the mathematics of their derivation, not so much that, so that you you're fully competent at deriving them and the mathematics of their derivation, but just so that you understand the the basic underlying principles, the, the underlying physical principles that they're based on, and those principles are essentially conservation of mass, conservation of momentum, and conservation of energy. We then went on to look at where some of these important non-dimensional parameters come from that we talk about lots in aerodynamics, particularly Reynolds number. We did that by non-dimensionalizing the mass conservation equation and the momentum conservation equations. And I left um, an exercise for you to do uh, for homework on page uh, 35 of your notes, an exercise 2, where we gave you this simplified form of the energy conservation equation, written in this uh, summation index form uh, that we discussed in the lecture. We discussed the the meaning of these terms that have repeated indices. So here we've got repeated indices J in two of the terms. It's also simplified because we've taken the rho density out from the derivative, which means this is the incompressible form. Um, so density is constant. And we've explicitly written temperature as T. So we've put in our definition from the state equation um, and replace the internal energy with temperature. Um, and if you compare this version with the version you have uh, equation 2.31 in your notes, hopefully you can see, um, if not in detail, in general where this equation comes from. And then I asked you to use the following non-dimensionalizations um, to prove that you can get equation 2.49 in the notes, the non-dimensional form of the energy equation. And the question asks you to use uh, ui star, so non-dimensionalized velocity as being the absolute velocity normalized by big U or U infinity, xi star, so non-dimensionalized space as the absolute space variable divided by L, which is a typical length scale of the flow. So this could be aircraft length, could be aircraft wingspan. There was a typo in the notes, um, which I did mention uh, in a lecture earlier this week, that the non-dimensionalization non of T should be absolute time over some base time. T naught, so that's a fixed value T naught, and also that non-dimensionalized temperature or T star we will set equal to T minus T naught normalized by T1 minus T0, where T1 and T0 are reference temperatures. There are a range of reference temperatures depending on the problem we're solving that we could choose for T1 and T0. So, if we call our starting equation, equation star, whoop, then we can say that substituting into equation star gives us the following. And I'm going to need a lot of space for this, so I'm going to start right over on the left hand side. So D T star T one minus T zero plus T 
zero all over d t star t zero. This will be one it. Yeah, t star t zero plus we're going to have u, j, and again d, t star, t1 minus T zero plus T zero all over D and this is X which becomes X J star L is equal to K over rho CP D two T and T again becomes T star T one minus T zero plus T zero all over D xj is x j star l d x j star l and of course that looks pretty messy but by remembering that lots of these things now are constants in here so t1 is a constant, t0 is a constant, little t0 is a constant, uh, l is a constant, and of course where we've got constants inside derivatives uh, we can bring them outside and importantly to note this term here this term that's added, because it's not multiplying the t star, the thing that is actually varying, well the derivative of that is just zero, so that will just disappear. So, we can bring outside the brackets here t1 minus t0 over little t0 star by plus u t1 minus t0 over l uj star d t star by dx j star equals k over rho cp Okay. Now just looking at the form of the equation that we're trying to achieve in equation 2.49, clearly there's no 
non-dimensional coefficient ahead of the second term on the left hand side. So we don't want anything left here. So ahead of this second term on the right hand side. So the obvious thing to do to achieve that is to divide through the entire equation by u t1 minus t naught all over l. So that's what we're going to do. So if we So what do we get if we do that? We get L over U little t zero D T star D little T star plus and then that term just vanishes and we're just left with U J star D T star by DX J star is equal to K over Rho CP one over U L D two T star And now we're getting pretty close. You can see that this is starting to look to look a little bit like equation two point four nine. We just need to define these non dimensional parameters, so let R E yeah. So we'll let R E Reynolds number be the usual row U L over mu and we're going to define these two new uh, non-dimensional parameters, the Prandtl number, where PR is equal to mu CP over K and ST, the Struhl number, equal to L over U T zero and hopefully you can see that if we do that we're now left with So there it is, equation 2.49 in your lecture notes. It's actually not too much of a challenge. Once you've decided on those non-dimensionalizations, to just plug them in, do a little bit of manipulation, and get the non-dimensional form. Now we discussed in the lecture the, s the physical significance of Reynolds number and its impact on uh, the viscosity term at the end of the momentum equations. 
And what I'd like you to do now is just have a little think about the physical significance of these other two parameters, the Prandtl number and the Struhl number. Um, and we will discuss that uh, in a future lecture.